TF2 presents a journey into the being of God, inspired by theological truths and a search for a deeper understanding. Many have asked the question, few have truly understood the Trinity. How can God be three and one at the same time? And why would God have three persons? When we look at the Trinity, the Trinity basically talks of the three parts of God or roles of God that make God. So, for example, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all God, but neither role is each other. For example, the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is not the Father. Now, that might sound like an abstract theory, but if you compare it to, for example, H2O, H2O can make water, it can be ice, it can be water, it can be steam. But water is not steam, steam is not ice, and ice is not water. In fact, they take different roles in nature, but at the same time, they're still made of the same part. Some theologians believe that humans are made of mind, body, and soul. And whether you agree or not, it, you could look at the Trinity as having being, being made of the mind, the body, and the soul of God. For example, the Father is the mind. He orchestrated creation. He orchestrated the plan. He was the mind behind uh, everything that goes on. The Son uh, was servant to the, to the Father. He was the, also the, the body, the flesh of God that uh, humans or we could relate to as our God in human form. And the Holy Spirit is being servant to the Father as well, is the soul or the spirit that uh, God of God, which is everywhere. Now, all those three can be, could be related to the mind, the, uh, the body, and the soul in the human. Okay, as far as the Bible, the Trinity is, in fact, mentioned in the New Testament, although the word Trinity is not mentioned. The, uh, the three roles of God are mentioned, or three persons of God. But it might surprise you that the Trinity is actually also in the Old Testament, Okay, in the New Testament, the Trinity is mentioned uh, when Jesus is baptized. Immediately uh, after he's baptized, the heavens opened and he sees the Spirit of God descending like a dove and resting on him. And the Father's voice from heaven says, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. So in Matthew 3.16, we see the Trinity there, the three roles of God being present. Okay, the, the Holy Spirit in this case is in the form of a dove. Another verse regarding the Trinity is in Matthew 28, where Jesus is talking to the disciples, and he says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So from that, theologians have labeled the three roles the Trinity. Now, it's important to realize that actually the Trinity, or the independent uh, roles of God are mentioned in the Old Testament as well. Not, it's not a concept of the New Testament. For example, in creation, in Genesis 1 verse 2, the Spirit of God, God was, God was referred to as being a spirit, was moving over the surface of the water. And in Psalms, David says, Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. So David was aware of the Spirit of God. Um, Job talks about the Spirit of God. He says, the Spirit of God has made me. It's obvious that God is mentioned a lot in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. But Jesus is also evident uh, in regards to the time of the Old Testament. So in John 1, for example, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. And through all... Th so they're talking about Jesus here and they're saying that through him all things were made and without him, nothing was made. 
So, in, in other words, Jesus was there at the beginning of creation. The concept of Jesus is, is by no means a New Testament idea. And even in the imagery, Steve Brading often talks about the, the thin blue line of, of Jesus being throughout the whole Bible. And in every story, there is an element of Jesus. For example, Abraham was asked by God to sacrifice his son, uh, God knowing that he was obviously going to sacrifice his son. And Abraham was willing to do that, uh, which was one of the reasons I'm sure Abraham had favor with God. But, uh, but instead, a ram was provided in a nearby thicket. You know, we often call God, uh, Jesus is known as the Lamb of God, and he, the Lamb, the sacrificial lamb. Well, in this kind of instance, a sacrifice was given, a lamb or a ram was given instead of Abraham's son, Isaac. Okay, now, in other stories, for example, like with Moses and the Israelites, God told the Israelites to put the blood of the lamb on the doors of their houses to escape the death of, or the, or the angel of death that was plaguing Egypt. Now, the, the act of Jesus actually being sacrificed on the cross was prophesied as being the blood of the lamb. We often refer to Jesus as the blood of the lamb. It's more than just a coincidence that the blood of the lamb was used to save the souls in Egypt or save lives in Egypt as the blood of the lamb is also used to save lives, uh, not just in the New Testament, but now. And that's what we do when we remember communion. It's important to also look at the importance of the Holy Spirit. We can see that the importance of, G of Jesus in the New Testament is to save our sins and so that we can have a relationship with God. The importance of God is really that he is to be worshipped and, uh, and enjoyed. One question that often comes up is why do we have the Holy Spirit? What is the importance of the Holy Spirit? Well, Jesus says uh, actually it's better for him to go uh, so that he can leave the Holy Spirit with us so that the Holy Spirit will actually dwell in us. Uh, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit dwelt in people or chosen people, but it wasn't there for everyone. But when Jesus died for us and when he left, he sent his Holy Spirit to be a counselor and a guidance for us. So where the presence of God used to dwell in the temple, the Holy Spirit now dwells in us. Our body is known as a temple and the Holy Spirit dwells in that and guides us and actually helps us in our walk. So Jesus says to the disciples, you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. So it's important to realize the Holy Spirit is in us as Christians. And that's um, so God is in us. We talk about Christians, Christ in us, God in us. You know, people used to go to the temple to be in the presence of God. Now we are the temple of God and the Holy Spirit dwells in those who believe. In summary, the Trinity is a concept that is consistent from the beginning of the Bible to the end. It consists of one God made of three persons, where each person of God has a different role. God represents the mind and orchestrator of the world. Jesus represents the body of God, who could be related to us as man and die for our sins. And the Holy Spirit represents the soul, which is a counselor given to us through Jesus' presence on earth to act as a guide so that those who believe can live life to the full through him.